Welcome along guys. Well I've been promising it for the last two or three review videos. The day has finally come that I get my hands on the incredible Triumph Rocket 3. This I'm looking forward to. Let's hop it. So first of all, massive, massive thanks to Destination Triumph in Washington. This is their demo bike. They've lent it to me for a week to play on. So I'm going to be using this all week. This is going to be my first ride review. I've literally come a mile here, not opened it up, nothing. So this is going to be my first impressions. And then later on in the week, hopefully we'll get a drier day and I'll come out and I'll give you my final verdict on this bike. But this is my first impressions review. This is an incredible bike and a bike I've been really looking forward to riding for, well, since I've seen it was being launched. Let's go. As you rev it, the whole bike moves. Because the engine is so big. <laughs> and this is the GT version. So this comes in two versions. This is the GT. The biggest change with the GT is you've got forward cruiser style foot pegs and you've got the back support and stuff. So this is a foot up, a proper cruiser. An absolute cruiser. As you pull away, it's an intimidating bike to ride because it is big. I think it weighs 295 kilos. Ooh! And because of the riding position, because it's very unnatural, unless you're used to cruisers, this is quite an unnatural riding position. I've ridden a few cruisers, mainly Moto Guzzi's. I've ridden the MGX21, and I've also ridden the uh, Audace, I think they call it. So it's similar style bikes with this similar seating, seating and footing position. It's got a 240 section rear tire, and even a 150 section front tire. The wheelbase is also longer than your average bike. I think it's 1644 millimeters wheelbase. To put that into perspective, my H2 Kawasaki is 225 millimeters shorter wheelbase. So even though it looks eight foot long, this the wheelbase is actually not that much different than a sports bike. The highlight of this bike is, of course, the engine. It's, the whole bike is built around the engine. This engine is completely new to what the old Rocket had. This engine is actually 18 kilos lighter than the... Just the engine alone is 18 kilos lighter than the old version. It puts out 164 brake horsepower, so a good amount of power. But the, but the incredible thing about this, the, the headline figure is the torque. 221 newton meters of torque. 221! <laughs> and you can tell it has, wow! That picks up! <laughs> oh my word! To put that into perspective, my H2 is 140 newton meters. The Super Duke, the 1300cc Super Duke, is about 140 newton meters. The H2R, the 300 horsepower, 250 mile hour H2R, is 160 newton meters. The Zero SRF electric bike is 190 newton meters. This is 40, this is 30 more newton meters than that. <laughs> Oh my word, hey, uh, this is brilliant, this is absolutely brilliant. The brakes are amazing, it's got twin Stylema calipers up front, and I think on 330mm discs. The rear brake is a full-on Brembo 4-pot, which I'll show you in the walk around. Because this sort of bike, if you want to get sporty with it, if you want to chuck it around, which you can, the way to do it is use the rear brake to balance the bike. I've had a lot of experience of riding these bikes through Tuscany on the twisty Italian mountains and I tell you now the best way to ride them set the speed with the back brake and then just lay them in and use the, the weight and the power of the bike to pull it out of the corners and it's actually a really fun way of riding when you've got an engine of this power of course you want electronics I wouldn't want to ride this in these conditions without that electronic protection because 240 section tire or not <laughs> that's gonna want to spin even in the dry so much power for overtaking wow 
that is just twist and go. Has it even got gears? I don't think I took it out of third yet. So set the speed on the rear brake. Lay it in. It, it lays in quite well. You can tell there's a bit of weight there. You've got a. I think you're going to have to counter steer a bit. Oh, that front end goes so light coming out the corners. <laughs> Layer into the left a bit. I better put some heat through these tyres at least. Oh, traction control doing its stuff there. Wow. Oh, that's fantastic. That is fantastic. This is the ultimate muscle bike. Oh, she's spinning up. I say the GT version has, a, I think, a more comfortable seat. You know, more of an upright, relaxed position. The bars are back towards you. I think on the R, you're, you're reaching forward. And of course, the foot pegs are down. I think my, I haven't ridden the R. I might ride this. I'm so impressed with this. I might ride the R just to see the differences. But I tell you, I like, if you're going to have a cruiser, you want to do it in comfort. You want to cruise in comfort. There's no point having a, a cruiser which is not comfortable. And I actually really like this GT style feet forward riding position. It's very weird to start with, but once you're used to it, it is a very comfortable way of riding. And you can't help but feel like a, a T800. <laughs> I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. your feet off the foot pegs when you get up to high speed your feet try and lift to try take off try and take off with the foot pegs i wonder what that'll be like say, at motorway speed we'll have to try it as part of the full in-depth review i'll take it on the motorway and we'll see how the <laughs> how high speed if, if your feet want to take off and end up around your shoulders throttle response sort of riding through town now it can be a, a tiniest of tiny bit snatchy, you could say, perhaps a tiny bit. Again, this bike is Euro 5 and all that nonsense they have to meet now. And if you're below 2,000 revs, I mean, sorry, second gear, 2,000 revs, when you come off the throttle, there's a little bit of a... But I have got it in sport mode. I don't know how I've got. A, I haven't even looked at the modes. It's quite complicated. There's a mode button, so I am in sport. So I'll try it in a different mode to see if that improves. But just coming through here, there's a little bit of snatch, tiny little bit. I mean, I'm being critical. I am being critical. <laughs> oh wow! What a machine! What a machine! Right, this is my favourite little bit of twisty road. You've seen me come through here so many times on my reviews. Not when it's as wet as this. I will have to get this out in the dry if we could possibly this week, please, weather gods, have a day where the road's dry. I need to see how this thing properly handles in the dry. First impressions, I know what it's going to be like. It's going to be as good as this sort of bike gets as good as a 300 kilo bike gets through the twisties it turns it drops in lovely it does fall into the bends lovely i'm not having to even do any counter steering it's dropping in with absolute minimal effort on the bars you're not wrestling this thing around the corners not at all but sometimes on this sort of bike your biggest problem with the handling is ground clearance running out of ground clearance scraping your foot pegs along I'm not going to get to that stage today, not on these conditions, so hopefully we can see how much clearance we get. Or if I have any clearance problems when we get this out again in the dry. Forget getting older and getting your GSs. When I get old, <laughs> I want to get one of these. I don't think I'll ever grow up. Not, not the mental age anyway. I'll just get more crusty. The crustiest child in the world. What a great way to be. Twisties, these are slippy and wet. Oh, it's such a shame. Why isn't it dry? Why has it got to be wet and horrible every time I go out on a bike? I guess that's the winter. Surprisingly mild is the good news. Ah, hit your grips. Yeah, it does just fall into the bends beautifully. You use the weight of the bike. This is how you ride these things. Use the weight of the bike to pull it into the bends. 
first of all set the speed, set your corner speed on the rear brake, use the weight of the bike to flow into the bend and once you pass the apex use the accelerator to lift the bike out of the corner. That's how you ride them and then you're really smooth, really lovely, sweet, it's very very rewarding when you get that right. If you're on the front brake you're, 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 you're unbalancing the bike, you're turning it in, it's not the way to ride this sort of bike. Smooth and flowing is what it's about. Overtaking grunt. 2,000 revs, third gear, 40 miles an hour. Yep! 75 miles an hour. <laughs> Suffice to say, it's got a bit of grunt. Right, here we go. Let's pull over here. And we'll do a little walk round. The, the walk round could take a little bit of time on this one because there's a lot to show you. So there it is. <laughs> it's absolutely disgustingly dirty. There's nothing you can do about that <laughs> this time of year. But there it is. Like I say, it's it's a long looking bike. It looks like it's got a real width to it, a real length to it. So they think it's 1644 millimeter wheelbase, 225 millimeters more than the H2. But how they've achieved that. It's little, little things like this. I mean, look at where they've mounted the front wheel spindle. Rather than having it here at the bottom of the forks, they brought it back a little bit, pulling that wheel in a little bit. Having that nice rake that they wanted to give that style and feel to the handling, but just pulling the wheel back by 30 mil or so, just to reduce that wheelbase. And it has made a difference. It doesn't feel like a massive, great, big, long bike. So this is the best side of the bike where you've got the exhaust coming out, the three headers coming out of that engine. The engine is just the thing about this bike. I mean, there, look, two and a half litre. I think it's something like 2458cc. Modern Triumphs these days, the finish of them is amazing and this is no different. Everything is finished beautifully. I mean, those exhaust, the standard exhaust headers, how lovely are those? You know, the, the way the standard pipe sweeps up the back. I hope you can do an aftermarket exhaust for these because it just needs to be a little bit louder. But the actual styling of the exhaust, I mean, the welds on the exhaust, it's beautiful. Disgustingly dirty Stylema calipers, top of the range Brembo caliper. There's no skimping on this bike. Everything on this bike is top of the line equipment. It looks like the actual engine is, of course, a stress member of the frame because the front of the frame bolts to the front of the engine and I guess the swinging arm just goes onto the back of the engine and perhaps there's a small brace between the middle. So the, uh, the engine is very much actually a part of, of the, the frame of this bike. A massive, massive rear wheel with a 140, sorry, 240 section rear tyre, which I think is the same as the Diavel. I guess the closest competitor to this bike is of course a Ducati Diavel, which I haven't tried. That's a bike which is, remains on my test list. There's a metal band down the center of the tank. Oh, I guess it clips down. Look, there's a clip at the front here. I guess you unclip that and this all folds back, I'm guessing, and gives you access to the airbox and whatnot. I bet that's not a real, that, won't be, that isn't a real petrol tank. That's just a dummy cover. Perhaps the tank is perhaps under here as well to keep that set, that weight lower, I'm not sure. Popping the cap and you can see you've got the, the filler under there. Nice aluminium, real aluminium finish. Let's turn her on again. Rocket 3. Good afternoon, future owner. <laughs> I like that. I like that Destination Triumph. Nice touch. So it's obviously cost customizable welcome messages as well. So it looks like it's analog, but it's actually a TFT, which I like. And I suspect you can go and change the style. I've not played with the dash yet. That will come in the next video. From the rear, again, it's quite an imposing bike. Sorry about the wind noise. Rear tail light looks lovely. And, of and another beautiful thing about it is shaft drive. There is no chain maintenance on this machine. Fully shaft drive. And even from this side of the bike, it doesn't look as nice because you haven't got those big headers coming out, but it still looks nice. I quite like the look of just the engine <laughs> running along the bottom there. Yeah, the bike is just all about the engine. And then you've got another little exhaust exits on this side. I mentioned the rear brake. There you go, a full on M40 four pot rear brake Brembo caliper on this and a ma massive rear disc. It looks like it's a 330 mil disc. All most of the braking in corners when you're setting if you're throwing this bike around the corners well, needs to happen on the rear and Triumph have addressed that. They've got a meaty rear brake 
love it. The GT has the forward mounted footrests, as I mentioned already. You've also got a filler here. This is the dipstick filler. So if you undo this, it is quite like a car. And then the dipstick is actually here. <laughs> it's a full on car dipstick. Slide that down inside. Ow, it's got the finger. And then pop the cover back on. LED headlights looking filthy again but I, I, the styling I love the styling I love it I think it's the best I think it's better is it better looking than the Davil don't know they're both fantastic looking things but I think maybe this is better looking you know I think that looks incredible okay let's jump back on trying for claiming around about 40 miles per gallon average so that's not bad if that is to be believed that's not too bad depends how you ride it obviously i suspect if you're giving it a lot of throttle that's going to drop considerably but we'll see how i get on with it over the next couple of days if the bloody rain stays away the gearbox the clutch you'd think two and a half liter bike you could be some issues with the cl a heavy clutch it's hydraulic of course but it's very light the gearbox is beautiful you know there's no false neutrals it's easy to find neutral it's just nice you're up and down the box it's very smooth engine braking it's not even too much engine braking really it's obviously doing some sort of clever electronic business to reduce the engine braking by feeding a bit of throttle when you come off the power i don't know if you can adjust how much engine braking it does i'll have a look at that but my hope motard's got twice as much engine braking as this and the engine is <laughs> under half the size oh i've had enough of this rain it can bugger off i didn't want to test out the wet weather protection on this oh i might as well let you know what it's like in the rain as i'm in the rain not very good <laughs> i'm getting wet oh yeah hey it's spinning up <laughs> it's spinning up oh it's a good job this thing's fully laden with electronics you'd be on your ass if it wasn't ah oh, so there we go before the downpour starts first impressions of the new triumph rocket 3 what a weapon what a weapon a proper proper sports cruiser proper sports cruiser no expense spared yes this thing is expensive that's the downside this is a £20,000 motorcycle. I think it's two, I think it's 20,200 for the base model, and then you can start putting some extras on it. You can put on luggage, as it's a GT, you need to be able to tour with this. There's provisions for panniers on the back, tank bags. It's an incredible thing. If you're in market for a, a massive, aggressive, sporty cruiser like this, <laughs> this has got to be the top of the pile massive thanks to destination triumph in washington for lending me this for the week i'm gonna have such fun on this if you want to see this bike this is their demo get yourself down there they've actually got a launch night on the 18th of january it's a saturday 6 p.m i'm gonna be there i'm gonna be at their launch for this bike uh, washington which is near worthing on the south coast destination triumph 18th of january 6 p.m I might see you there. All right, guys, take care, and I'll speak to you soon, and I'll be back on the rocket again very soon. See you later. Oh, it's proper wet, isn't it? Don't like that. Bloody shirked. It's proper wet. It's that rain where you don't think it's raining, but it's actually you're soaked. Dirty bugger.